Self Portrait 101. All right. Are we recording? We're recording. Okay. I'm Gabby. I'm Miss Friend's little sister. Um, I'm going to do a self portrait today, but I'm also going to kind of make it more of Miss Friend's because I don't have a picture of myself or a mirror right now. So, and you guys all know what she looks like, so you can tell me how I do. All right. I like to start with the head shape. Um, and then we can kind of lay out where the eyes, nose, mouth, and everything else goes. So, Katie, or sorry, Miss Friends, has a quite an oval-shaped head. So I'm going to start with just the top of her head. And then her chin. So let's say oval. So a lot of these I'm just going to draw really lightly. So we can go in and erase some of the lines later, but it's just to get a shape. And then she's got a little chin. So we're going to mark that there. All right. So now you can see, I think, if you can see the lines on my paper, otherwise I can make them darker. Yeah, you're going to have to make them darker. So we got forehead, basic oval shape, and our chin marked down. We don't need to connect anything yet because we're going to put in our eyes and our nose and our mouth so we can kind of see where the cheekbones and everything lay after that. So... We're going to get the middle of the face with just a basic line, nice and light. I'm not going to go dark. And then our eyes. So our nose is kind of in the middle, wouldn't you say? So we're going to mark a little spot as to where the nose is. So I just do a little line kind of where like in between your nostrils would be. Oh, well, sorry. Oh, that's live. <laughs> I'm talking to the kids. Um, and then we're going to kind of draw in like a little space here with the two lines you can see where the eyes are going to go then. I'm going to do the same thing for where our mouth is. All right so now we can see where our nose, our eyes are going to lay, and our mouth and that's kind of the basic map of a face or at least that's the map that I use and Katie wants a big smile <laughs> which is more difficult because teeth are tricky so we're going to tell her to close her mouth for this <laughs> one. <laughs> All right. I'm going to start with the eyes, kind of lay out where they are. And she has some glasses on, so that's going to be fun. Should I take off my glasses? No. So people tend to do circles right away for eyes. Our eyes are not circles. Our eyeballs are. And that's going to be something that really makes your eyes look three-dimensional is if you actually kind of make them look like a circle inside of what you lay out for your eye sockets. So if you see in there, I've kind of already made what's round so that we can shade in here and make them look three dimensional. It's super easy and it has an easy effect too. All right, so now that I have the eyes in there, Katie's forehead. I'm sorry, I'm trying to say Miss Friends, but it's hard because she's my sister. Miss Friends. Yeah? We, we, can't, we can't really see what's happening on the paper. I'm moving it closer right now. All right, so I raised her forehead up a little bit there too. All right, because the eyes, I needed some more forehead there. And so now I'm gonna bring her nose down just a little bit. That's why we do like really kind of gentle sketches so that we can go in and remove them. And then the mouth. So I'm a huge fan of making lines and going in and erasing because then you can kind of play around in your shape. Nothing's permanent this way. You don't have to think too hard about it then. All right, I'm gonna speed this up for you guys so it'll take forever now. She 
gave me nostrils, not just an L-shaped nose. Ooh, and I'm getting cheekbones. It's getting fancy. Contouring. So for everybody that's going to be watching this later, I have a class right now that is live streaming and watching the recording. So if you hear some noises in the background, I do have a class that's watching this in real time. Make sure that you do not press your pencil too hard I'm using a pencil much darker than I would like to use so you can see it, so it's gonna be hard for me to erase. So this is gonna look very sketchy. Not in like a scary sketchy, but a literal sketch. When you choose to do your portraits, you can use any materials you like, but I would suggest starting with a light pencil no matter what you do, or maybe doing a light pencil sketch on one side and then starting on the other side of your paper, or even using a piece of junk mail to do your practice before getting into a final copy. You can make as many copies as you want. There will be examples of super duper famous portraits in your lesson. There will be examples that a kindergartner and my daughter made yesterday. There will be uh, links where you can find other examples that Cassie Stevens did. So anybody who has had me as a teacher before knows that I really like the stuff that this um, art teacher Cassie Stevens does. She taught in the same district that I taught in in Nashville, Tennessee years ago. Some of you might know her if you watched the TV show Nailed It. She was a winner one of the seasons. Ooh, this is really coming along now. People tend to forget that the hair is still part of your head. After I do the forehead, I like to remind people that there's still space up above and that's for the hair. Or if you're bald, you can raise up and shape the head that way too. I don't think many of you guys are bald. A lot of you will probably have your hair start down a little bit more. I have a pretty big forehead. <laughs> and her hairline is far back, just like mine. Oh, I forgot to tell you to map out the ears. So I like to map out the ear kind of where like the center of the eye is, is kind of where it tends to be the top of your ear. She looks a little like an elf, but we'll fix that. If you wear long braids, it's really easy to make a braid by just making X's and then sort of a round shape around the outside of your X. That was another trick I taught kids last year. You want to be careful <laughs> with wrinkle lines. <gasps> You're giving me wrinkles? <laughs> She's giving me wrinkles? They do have an immediate effect. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going on 36. I would like to call them smile lines. <laughs> And a portrait is typically just your head, your neck, and your shoulders. So think about school photos. What you see in your school pictures or your school photo, that is the, pretty much the only part of your body that you will be drawing for a self-portrait. You can talk about your neck. <laughs> the neck? So I, when I'm teaching kids in the classroom, I show them that your neck pretty much comes down below your ears here. So don't, if you just have a neck, one that goes right down <coughs> below your chin, your head's probably gonna go boop. You're not gonna be able to keep your head up if you have a teeny skinny little neck. 
I have a pretty thin, long neck also. And you can still see that it goes to like her jawline almost. I might have made it a little bit. There we go. She was giving me a bigger, a little bit bigger of a neck. I've not been doing my weightlifting lately, so it's not that thick these days. Ooh, she's giving me a luscious eyelashes. She's noticed that I have mascara on today. <laughs> Now we have to decide or see if she's gonna give me my glasses or if it's a contacts day. <laughs> I'm wearing glasses though. If you want to add a t-shirt, it's very easy just to make a little scoop right here. I have on a V-neck today, so it's not gonna be just a little round scoop there. You can add designs of your shirt or you can give yourself a different shirt. I'm wearing a Minnetonka-esque shirt today with little anchors all over it. Oh, we've got hair on the side. You can see a little pony. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll move my hair over. So Gabby's doing a portrait because it's of me. Now if you guys, if we weren't recording this and nobody knew, the older she gets, the more she looks like me, <laughs> and the more we look like our, or she starts to look like my mom. We both do. So, she could probably get away with saying this was a self-portrait if it wasn't being recorded. Except for I never wear my glasses. Right, she does not wear her glasses, <laughs> and she really needs to. I'd probably do a better job right now. And like Gabby said, it's nice to do a big, big smile, but drawing teeth can get a little funny. So if you want to do your mouth closed, you might get a little <laughs> less frustrated. If you want to try doing teeth, go for it. There's an artist, Basquiat, who does sort of crazy looking teeth in, with his style. And I taught that to all of my fourth and fifth graders last year at Excelsior. So if you are, I know some kids will have seen examples of them in the hall right before school got out in the spring. Looks a little stern. She said it looks a little stern, so I look a little serious, but when I'm not smiling, I tend to look a bit serious. You guys have to stay muted because remember this video is going to be posted in the lesson. It makes it all that much more real. For you kids, if you want to do a background, a background would be great. You can leave it sort of like this. This, this assignment is very open. I would like to circle back at the end of the school year and do a second portrait and see how your beginning of the year looks compared to the end of the year. So do not throw out your portraits. Maybe you guys have a folder at home. Um, some of you might have a portfolio. Some of your parents might have like a Tupperware bin or something that you put your artwork in. So what, whatever it is you have, please don't get rid of your portrait. Now she's given me, it's hard to see, but there's trees. She's sketching trees and birds in the background. <laughs> Let me know. And then don't forget to put the date on it. So you could do, what is it, the 24th? You could do 9 24 20. You could just do 2020. Or so figure out what way you want to do the date. And then don't forget your signature. <coughs> Gabby has a special art signature that she uses. <laughs> this isn't my best quality here. It's not the same way she would write her name on a homework assignment. Your nose is not right. It's okay if it's not totally perfect. You can always practice and do more. Just because it's an art assignment right now does not mean this is the only one you do until you get another assignment. Oftentimes in school you get one <coughs> portrait assignment a year. One of my classes last year, I believe maybe third or fourth grade, did a few of them. So you can work on them on your own or you can decide I am just going to do them when they're assigned. Hello, let's see, let's see how she did. 
Hadi şey diyor.